Okay, so we are going to continue our journey into frequency domain analysis, and we now want to consider what to do with non-periodic signals. And we need to ask ourselves, how are we going to do frequency analysis for such signals? So here's an example of a non-periodic signal. Notice it does not repeat itself at any um, regular frequency or regular time. So nevertheless, this signal, it has a time perspective, but it also should still have a frequency perspective. So what frequencies are contained in this signal and when, what specific mixture of frequencies are needed to reconstruct X of T from some basis functions, which is what we did with Fourier series. But really the only tool we have so far is this exponential Fourier series. But So we know how to calculate it, but we need to know what's the fundamental period. And for a non-periodic signal, there is no fundamental period. And hence, there's no fundamental frequency. Let's imagine that we take our original signal, the non-periodic signal, and we assume that it repeats itself every t naught. So let's just um, create what we call a periodic extension of x of t. And you'll notice that there is a tilde over this signal here. That's just to indicate that it's periodic. It's just a terminology that sometimes you'll see. So this periodic extension can be defined as taking the original x of t and then repeating it every t naught. So we have copies every integer multiple of t naught and thus it could be represented as a summation like that. Now we have a periodic signal so we can do a Fourier analysis on it with the Fourier series. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose t naught sufficiently large so that there's no overlap between the copies. I mean, if we have the choice of T naught, then these signals, these copies could overlap with each other. But because it's periodic, now we can calculate the Fourier series. So we have an expression for the coefficients of the Fourier series. And note that in one period, this X tilde, the periodic extension, um, actually takes on the value of x of t, the original signal, in that period. So we can just replace that in the integral. And we could come up with some spectrum like this for this periodic extension, um, which um, we just want to focus on a few things here. But note, in that spectrum, there is actually an implicit frequency spacing. So Although k is referring to the uh, uh, Fourier series coefficients, we also associate those k's with certain frequencies, k omega naught. And there's therefore a spacing between those in the spectrum given by delta f or delta omega. So I'm just going to take a look at that Fourier series expression for the coefficients and note that each of these basis functions is at a frequency omega given by k delta omega. So it's k times delta omega um, is the actual frequency that is associated with that coefficient. So in essence, these coefficients are a function of frequency. And that coefficient is the amplitude of the phasor at that frequency that is contributing to the Fourier series. Okay, so with this periodic extension, we assume that we have a spectrum that looks like this. And now what we want to do is we want to take that periodic extension and we want to take the limit as the period goes to infinity. And effectively what we are doing is we are uh, recapturing our original non-periodic signal by taking the limit as T naught goes to infinity. So let's just think about what happens to the spectrum as that happens. So if t naught is going to infinity, then the frequency spacing 1 over t naught is getting smaller and smaller. So in the limit, the frequency spacing is actually going to 0. So as, we, as the period gets larger and larger, uh, 
then our spectrum, although it has the same shape, we're just getting more coefficients sort of filling out the shape of it. And eventually the spacing between those becomes zero. So we, what we're doing is we're going from a discrete spectrum and in the limit it becomes a continuous spectrum. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, the expression for the coefficients. And what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by t naught. And what we're going to do is define this function, capital X of omega, as the limit of that expression as t naught goes to infinity. Well, if t naught is going to infinity, our frequencies, rather than being discretely spaced, are now just every single frequency. And that's what I've represented from this step to this step, that effectively what's happened is our limits become infinite and our frequency spacing between samples, or between spectral components, becomes zero. So effectively we have a continuum in omega. And that is the definition of x of omega. And what is that exactly? So x of omega is the amplitude of the phasor at frequency omega, which is contributing to this Fourier representation of the signal. So it is effectively the same as the Fourier series coefficient. It's just that rather than there being a discrete number of them, there's a continuum of them, which is why we're representing x as a function of omega. So we had our periodic extension of xt has a spectrum that looks like that. The Fourier series um, of that uh, periodic expansion looks like this. In the limit, we can recover our non-periodic signal. And what happens is we move from this expression to this expression. And this is what is defined as the Fourier transform of x of t. So what we use Fourier transforms for non-periodic signals and Fourier series for periodic signals. However, there is a linkage between them. You'll notice that the spectrum here is discrete. The spectrum here is actually continuous. Okay, so now we want to take a look at it um, uh, in the backwards direction. That is, if we have those frequency components, then what expression do we need to use for the inverse Fourier series or the inverse Fourier transform in this case? So we started with our periodic extension, which has a Fourier series that looks like that. We recover our non-periodic signal by taking the limit as t naught goes to infinity. And so x of t is the limit of that periodic extension as t naught goes to infinity. So it's the limit of that sum is the way to express x of t. And I'm going to multiply by t naught and divide by t naught. And remember that by definition this ck t naught was our x of omega. Um, at this point, there's still discrete frequencies, but in the limit, that becomes continuous. And note that I've replaced this 1 over t naught with delta omega over 2 pi. That's our frequency spacing. And what happens in the limit, that sum becomes an integral. x at k delta omega just becomes x of omega. This exponential just looks like this and that delta omega just becomes a differential. So the sum turns into an integral over omega. So just uh, restating where we've got to, this is um, sort of the most important result here, is for periodic signal analysis, we use Fourier series, um, and for non-periodic signals, we use Fourier transforms, and they Conceptually, they are the same thing. We have a bunch of different basis functions and we have amplitudes of those basis functions. It's just in one case you have a sum, in the other case you have an integral, in one case you have discrete frequency components, in another you have continuous frequency components. Um, just in by way of terminology, um, we'll, you'll often see uh, 
a signal and its Fourier, uh, uh, Fourier uh, what's the right word for it, expression, um, shown in this, in this way. So we have a signal and then its Fourier series coefficients. So those are both equivalent ways of representing the, the signal. And then, and that's called a Fourier series pair. Fourier transform pair, we have x of t is the original signal, capital X of omega is the frequency domain description of that signal.